but his efforts were in vain. The warriors suddenly transformed into evil, shark-jawed creatures. They piled on top of the Autobots, then dragged them into a large complex where the two were locked in a barred cage. As the guards left, another prisoner looked through the bars of the adjoining cage. What is this place? asked Hot Rod. This is Quintesson, was the reply. It is the home of the Sharkticons who brought you here, and their masters, the Quintessons. They hunt down the enemies of Unicron, a monstrous thing which devours other worlds. I am the only survivor of the destruction of my home planet. Yeah, we've seen it, said Cup. Now we know its name. Suddenly the Sharkticon guards appeared again. They seized the other prisoner and dragged him away. I go to stand trial before the Quintesson ruler, he cried. But guilty or innocent, the sentence is always the same. Death! Soon it was the turn of Cup and Hot Rod. Their arms were bound to their sides with energy bonds, which also prevented them from transforming. Then they were led into the courtroom. A Quintesson with a rotating, many-faced head sat upon a high throne. The prosecutor stood below and waved long tentacles as Cup and Hot Rod were led onto a platform projecting high above a dark, water-filled pit. The prosecutor addressed the figure on the throne. Has your Imperial Majesty reached a verdict? Guilty or innocent? Innocent, said the figure on the throne and the platform dropped down, hurling Cup and Hot Rod towards the pit far below. Just as the two Autobots hit the water at the bottom of the pit, the energy bonds were released. A second later, they were attacked by a swarm of Sharktikons. Cup and Hot Rod fought off the monsters, but it was no use. Still, they kept coming. They've got more Sharktikons than we have photon charges, cried Hot Rod. Come on, let's hold a demolition derby cried Cup, transforming. The Sharktacons were bowled over right and left as Cup and Hot Rod slammed into them. Then, racing around the sides of the pit at top speed, the two Autobots shot to the surface and onto the floor of the trial chamber. The Sharktacons quickly followed, swarming out of the water. Although outnumbered, the Autobots still kept the Sharktacons at bay, piling them in heaps all around the sides of the pit and the walls of the chamber. The Quintesson prosecutor raged as he saw the Sharktacons being destroyed by the two Autobot prisoners. He left his position below the throne and rushed to the side of the pool to take command. But before he could issue a single order, there was a thunderous crash. The great metal doors to the chamber toppled inwards. The prosecutor vanished underneath the doors. The next moment, he was crushed completely by the mighty weight of the Dinobots, Slag, Sludge, and Grimlock as they trampled into the chamber and joined in the fight against the Shocktacons. Riding high on Grimlock's back was a small transformer. Now the Shocktacons were in retreat. From the throne came a furious cry. Shocktacons, execute them! Grimlock looked at the Shocktacons. Me, Grimlock, say... Execute them! And he pointed to the rest of the Quintessons. It dawned on the Shocktacons that here was their chance to rid themselves of their Quintesson masters. Turning away from the Autobots, they swarmed across the chamber and up to the throne. As the Quintessons fled before the Shocktacons, Cup said, I think the problems on this planet will be solved very shortly. What about our problems? asked Hot Rod. We need a ship! A cheery voice chanted, You get a ship if I get a trip! Well, who are you? asked Hot Rod in surprise. Him, Wheelie. Him, friend, said Grimlock. Him, help us find you. He'll be my friend too if he can find a ship, said Hot Rod. Wheelie had already found one for them. Beyond the walls of the Quintesson complex rose the shape of the strangest ship the Autobots had ever seen. Galvatron and his force sped through space to report to their master, Unicron, that Ultra Magnus and the Matrix had been destroyed. Little did they know that the Autobots were safe, if a bit crowded, in the command pod of their shuttle. An emergency separation had allowed them to escape while the Decepticons blasted the empty shuttle with their missiles. The pod, however, had not escaped without damage. 
Perceptor, can you locate a place we can set down for repairs? Asked Ultra Magnus. There's the planet Junkion, replied Perceptor. The battered shuttle swooped low over the junk-strewn surface of the planet and bounced and slithered to a halt. The Autobots started immediately on repairs. Daniel helped, clad in an exosuit once worn by his father, Spike. As they worked, they didn't see the Junkions observing them from among the heaps of junk. Suddenly, both Autobots and Junkions were startled by a roar of jets overhead. Decepticons! cried Ultra Magnus. We've got to draw them off and double back to the shuttle. But the first missiles blew the half-repaired ship to fragments. Trapped on the surface, the Autobots fought desperately as Decepticons came at them from all sides. The Autobots made a fighting retreat down a long valley. The junk piled on either side gave some protection from the Decepticon fire. Ultra Magnus brought up the rear. He waited until the Autobots were clear. Then he fired his laser weapon to bring down some of the junk as a barrier behind them. Now he stood alone before the fury of the Decepticon attack. From a ridge nearby, Galvatron watched. Ultra Magnus opened his chest compartment and took out the Matrix. It pulsed with power, but a special shield prevented its full power from being released. Ultra Magnus pulled, but the shield remained firm. Prime, he cried. You said the Matrix would light our darkest hour. Then, at a command from Galvatron, a flight of his evil warriors raced overhead, and a salvo of cannon fire blasted Ultra Magnus. Galvatron seized the Matrix with a cry of triumph, and the battle was over. The Decepticons withdrew victoriously as quickly as they had arrived. The Autobots looked in horror at the smoking remains of their leader. First Optimus Prime, now Ultra Magnus, and the Matrix is gone, said R.C. What do we do? Before any of them could speak, there was a roar of motorcycle engines. The Autobots turned to see the Junkions racing to give battle among the rusting piles of junk. And once again, there came the sound of jet engines. Cruising over them was a weird spaceship. Familiar faces peered through the ports. Cup and Hot Rod with the Dinobots had arrived in the nick of time. As the Autobots disembarked, the Junkions watched suspiciously. But Hot Rod and Cup persuaded them that the Autobots meant no harm, and finally made friends with them. After a while, Rekgar, the Junkion leader, announced that not only would they repair Ultra Magnus, but they would join forces with the Autobots in pursuing Galvatron, winning back the Matrix, and destroying Unicron. Galvatron stood on Unicron, the Matrix secured about his neck by a chain. Listen to me, Unicron, he said. I now possess that which you wanted destroyed. Don't underestimate me, Galvatron, came the voice from deep within the evil planet. Next moment, Galvatron fell to his knees as the surface upon which he stood began to shake. Unicron was moving forward towards Cybertron, and he was transforming into a gigantic, horned, winged demon. Reaching out, he began to tear at Cybertron with cruel, clawed hands. On the planet, the Decepticons scrambled to defend themselves. Galvatron transformed to his cannon shape and fired at Unicron. The monster picked Galvatron up between finger and thumb and swallowed him. As Decepticons swarmed around Unicron, the Autobots and Junkions dived to the attack. One giant hand crushed the Junkion ship to fragments. A blast of fire blew a large piece out of the Quintesson craft, and it crashed out of control through Unicron's eye and into the great mechanical head. Inside Unicron, the shattered Quintesson ship fell apart as it tumbled into the depths of the monster. The passengers were thrown out and landed in a heap, all except Hot Rod. Where is he? asked Daniel. I hope they didn't get him, cried Springer, 
as down from the roof there sprang long cables armed with snapping metal jaws. They writhed and grasped at Daniel and the Autobots. Darting and dodging, the Autobots ran clear, but Daniel stumbled and fell. In an instant, he was being attacked from all sides. R.C. turned and fired several rapid shots, and the cables were severed. But a stray shot smashed an overhead pipe. A roaring torrent of liquid swept Daniel off his feet and down a long passage. Struggling, Daniel was borne along by the liquid deep into Unicron. At last, he fought clear and found himself looking up at a conveyor belt high above his head. Captured Decepticons were hanging from the conveyor and being dropped one by one into a cauldron of boiling acid. He heard a shout. It was his father and the Autobots from the Cybertron moon bases. In a few more seconds, they too would drop into the seething acid and be destroyed. Daniel was desperate. He could see no way to stop the conveyor. Aiming the built-in weaponry of his exosuit, he pressed the firing button. At the very moment that Spike and the Autobots dropped from the conveyor, Daniel's shots shattered a hydraulic support and a metal cover slammed down over the fuming cauldron. I did it! cried Daniel as he saw his father and the others land safely on the cover. Out in space, the remaining Decepticons continued to attack Unicron. The Dinobots had regrouped and battered at the monster to get inside and rescue their friends. Deep inside Unicron, Hot Rod slowly got to his feet. He had fallen much farther than any of the others. He was in a wide chamber littered with twisted metal and broken machinery. A dazzling light appeared hanging in the shadows. The Matrix. Hot Rod took a step forward and saw that Galvatron had the Matrix. It will do you no good, Autobot, cried Galvatron. It cannot be opened. Not by a Decepticon, replied Hot Rod. The voice of Unicron echoed in the darkness. Destroy him or feel yourself torn limb from limb. Galvatron aimed a shot at Hot Rod, who transformed and raced away. Then he hurtled back to the attack. To and fro the fight raged. Then Galvatron leapt on Hot Rod as he transformed back into his robot shape. The Decepticon leader seized his enemy around the neck and squeezed. First Prime, then Ultra Madness, he snarled. And now you! It's a pity you Autobots die so easily, but I might have a sense of satisfaction now. Hot Rod's strength was ebbing rapidly as he looked up into the evil face of Galvatron. The Matrix hung on its chain, and as Hot Rod looked into the pulsing crystal, he heard in his mind the voice of Optimus Prime. Arise, Rodimus Prime! The Matrix glowed ever brighter within its shield. Power surged through the body of the fallen Hot Rod. With a mighty heave, he hurled Galvatron from him. Galvatron fired a shot, but it was deflected harmlessly by the Matrix. Hot Rod picked up Galvatron. For a moment, he held him above his head. This is the end of the road, Galvatron! He cried and smashed the Decepticon through the Unicron's metal side to be lost in the vastness of space. Now he picked up the Matrix. The shield came off easily in his hands. Unicron screamed as the power of the Matrix surged into him. Then he pulled himself apart as he tried to stop the terrible thing which was destroying every corner of his body. Daniel and Spike and the Autobots struggled through the collapsing wreck that had been Unicron. Suddenly, a tall and powerful Autobot stood before them. Their new leader, Rodimus Prime. He cried, Autobots, transform and roll out! I knew you had potential, lad! cried Cup. In a moment, the fleet of Autobot vehicles with Spike and Daniel aboard were racing for safety. With a splintering crash, they burst through Unicron's remaining eye. From Cybertron, the Autobots watched the evil Unicron explode into a million fragments. All that remained was the horned head, orbiting the planet like a strange moon. 
the struggle was over. Under the leadership of Rodimus Prime, the Autobots could begin to rebuild their home.